What's going on, fishing family? For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Josh and I am the Outdoor Dude. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about why I hate trailer hooks on spinner baits. Coming right up. Bam! Look at that big mama jamma, folks. Okay, guys, we're back. And as I said, the today's topic of the video is why I hate trailer hooks on spinner baits. That's my opinion. That's one man's opinion. That doesn't mean they are wrong to use and you should never use them. I'm not saying that. I'm just stating my case and why one man here dislikes trailer hooks on spinnerbaits. So let's get into it. Real quick, for those of you who are new to the channel, I do all sorts of educational fishing content. I do all sorts of fishing content like this where I just talk about certain topics. And I do all sorts of actual fishing when it's not winter and everything's frozen over. So if you're into that sort of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there and click the notification bell so YouTube notifies you when I do a new video. Now, I'm of the school of thought that you do not need a trailer hook ever, and here's why. Assuming you're not fishing for bedding fish because that's an entirely different animal, the only reason I could see you needing a trailer hook for your spinner bait is because you're getting short strikes, and that could be because your spinner bait is moving too slow and they're getting too good of a look at it. And I'm actually not the only one that believes this because I learned this technique from Hank Parker and the guys over at Tactical Bassin. If you're getting short strikes, there's a way to play with blade size and increase the speed of your bait rather than changing to a trailer hook and making that bait astronomically less weedless than before. You can also add a trailer bait to your hook, but we'll get to that in a moment. First off, let's talk about the blades. The faster the blades turn, the more lift it provides to your bait in the water. Also, the larger your blades are, the more lift it provides to your bait in the water. As you might notice with Colorado bladed spinner baits or Indiana bladed spinner baits, they can run a lot slower. So with that said, what you want to do if you want to get this bait to run a lot faster is you want to decrease the size of your blades. I, being that I'm in upstate New York, I like to run willow blades a lot and it really um, helps match little schools of bait fish that are in the area and stuff like that. It helps that blade, helps make that almost look like a, more, there's more than one fish there. And the small Colorado blade gives a great vibration. This happens to be my favorite way of fishing a spinnerbait here in upstate New York. Now you might see that I actually have a spinnerbait with a trailer hook hooked on here, and I put this on here for purpose of the video. I do own trailer hooks. I'm not saying that I don't like to use them all the time. I like to use them for pike fishing and things like that, uh, predator fishing that strike multiple times before they actually connect with their bait. If you've seen footage, underwater footage of pike or muskie striking at their baits, they often strike multiple times before they get a good hit. So I like a trailer hook. I get way better hookup ratios fishing open water for pike. I fish a lot of ponds, and when I fish the lake, I fish the shallows more often than not, or I fish the creeks and stuff like that, and I'm fishing shallow areas. So I use a smaller 3 8 ounce spinner bait. So with that said, I often have to find myself using small tricks to get this thing to run a little bit faster for me without turning sideways. So I got right here, oh, if I can get it out, fresh out of the box, Booyah spinner bait. Oh, I bent that a little bit right out of the box, didn't I? This is the one that I like to run all the time all year round doesn't matter where i'm fishing i'm like gerald swindle with the kiss method keep it simple stupid and i run this one and when they're not biting this one i run this one and when they don't buy this one i throw this one and that's that's really it now there's one i like silver and blue maybe a little bit in there if there's a blue back herring bite now there's a trick that i have that you can do to a spinner bait that'll get it to run a little bit faster without messing with the blade size and I do this because I often run a trailer bait, which, which tends to slow the bait down a little bit. So in clear water, I like to burn a spinner bait. And with a light spinner bait like this, you often find it turning on its side. And you can't have that happening. So what I like to do is you might see the angle of this blade right here, the angle of this brand new spinner bait versus the angle of the one that I run normally after I get a hold of it. And what I do is I take this part and I pinch it down just a bit. Just enough, kind of closes the gap right here just a little, but that's not why I do that. I do this so this bait, this, I do this so this bait will actually run a lot faster without lifting too high in the water column. This blade sits out behind, which you end up having to make sure, because I'll run a paddle tail swim bait on this as a trailer. So you want to make sure that this doesn't interfere with the paddle tail and the swim bait. So I like to run an actual trailer bait on the back of my hook. And I like to run the Zoom Super Fluke Junior Paddle Tail. 
and I just feed that on there. You feed that on there as straight as possible. That is key. So you feed that on there. I clip the tip of the nose off of this bait, and I feed that on there like that. Get that thing running. You get that thing really straight. And what you end up having is a really large profile on the bottom here, almost like a chatterbait. You get your vibration up top. You get your vibration in the back and the bottom. And this actually gets a large profile, like a decent bait fish. It puffs up when it's swimming, you know? So this gets a large profile, like a decent bait fish in the water. And that gives that bass something to hone in on. Because the vibration of the blades and the flash of the blades brings the fish in. And they come burning in. And they'll end up seeing that larger fish right there. And instead of hitting these they'll hit this and often with the way this is you'll get them to hit the whole thing but I like these booyah spinner baits because that arm on top isn't so dang long that when you do this to when you collapse this bait like I do to get it to run faster it doesn't get in the way of the hook so if this comes down they could still nail that hook you get real good hook sets and you catch a lot of fish. If you watch my videos now, you'll see that I absolutely love spinnerbait fishing. And you'll see that I absolutely love throwing this spinnerbait setup. It doesn't matter where I go, I'll throw this and I catch fish. It's just one of my biggest confidence baits, especially one of my favorite search baits, moving baits. And I throw this a lot, a lot, a lot. All right, guys, so what am I saying? I love spinnerbait fishing, but I do not like trailer hooks. They make the bait way less weedless than it was intended on being. And you can't throw it up in those areas that you're supposed to be able to throw these spinner baits up in the brush, up in the toolies, up in the reeds, whatever you want, wherever you are in the country, whatever you want to call them. But you got to be throwing this thing in the thick stuff. And this thing can really work well in the thick stuff if you don't put a wide open hook on the dang back of it and get it to catch everything in its mother out there in the water. The plus sides to running a trailer hook, pike fishing, predator fishing, open water fishing. I love them. I'll run them all the time. But... For bass fishing, you're living, you're working up in that slop, you're working in that thick stuff, run the trailer bait. Pick a swim bait that you like, pick a swim bait that works for the spinner bait that you're throwing, and give it a try. So where I'm going to end the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video helps somebody out there, and I hope I could help everybody catch some more fish. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love every last one of you. I wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for you guys. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button right over here. And if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist of fishing videos I got right up here, or check out one of these two videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.